When it comes to choosing an interior for your camper van, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of different options available to you. Today, we're gonna to be working with van furniture on this beautiful interior behind us. When it comes to ordering this interior, you can have it in a range of different colors and finishes, but in this instance, the customer has asked for the plain birch ply. I'm Lee, this is Coon Valley Campers, and today we're gonna to be showing you how to treat this interior to give it a beautiful hard wearing finish, and then we're gonna fit it for you. Regular viewers will notice we're in a totally different setting today, and that's because we're in our next door neighbor's workshop, Terry Grinham. Now, Terry is a cabinet builder. He's been working with wood all of his working life, and he knows a thing or two when it comes to applying a coating and a finish to raw wood. So he's gonna give us the advice today in terms of what to do and how to apply the varnish. I'm no expert when it comes to applying those sorts of things. So what we're gonna do in today, we're gonna pick a couple of these uh, pieces off of the interior, go through the process of protecting them with a wax and a varnish, and then right at the end, we'll show you the finish and then the process of actually fitting the interior into the camper van. Before we make a start with pulling bits of the interior off and then bringing them to the workbench to treat, I just wanted to have a chat with you about the interior itself. Now, we've actually fitted one of these already uh, into a VWT4, hashtag Dan's van, and we're bringing out videos to that later on. In fact, we'll leave a link in the description below. But what we've got in front of us here is the completely plain option when it comes to ordering this interior. The majority of the interior itself is a high quality birch ply and it makes up the main cabinetry that you see here. The worktop itself is a solid laminate oak worktop and it comes in a big panel but what they've done is had it CNC cut to fit the profile of the interior perfectly. The rear panel, which is an op optional extra, that is a large piece of CNC cut MDF with an oak veneer on top, which gives this beautiful uh, grain, but also has the grooved effect in it. And then when it comes to treating and varnishing this, you'll see how beautiful that comes out. The tambour door might be unfamiliar to you because as far as I understand, van furniture are the only people out there that do a solid oak tambour door. Now this part's already been treated. This has been treated in the Osmo oil, which is one of the options you can choose when ordering the uh, plain birch ply interior. And what a beautiful design it is. It comes with the space to fit your 12 volt Waco compressor fridge or a similar design fridge. We've got drawers, we've got the doors that um, enter into the main compartment so you can store your water bottles or your gas. We have the lift up door there. That's the bit I'm gonna be removing later to treat. Um, nice big roller shutter door on there, but with access cupboards inside, so you can get into that awkward space. You can get into that awkward space behind the wheel arch. And then you've got a couple of other access doors. Oh, it's going so well. <laughs> At least I didn't drop it. The last part of the interior, which I can't really hold up easily, is the top locker. And again, this is a fully birch ply CNC cut piece. We'll be treating that in the same manner. I just can't hold it up at the minute because it's a little bit awkward without installing it in the van. So the beauty of having the plain birch ply interior is that it's about 250 pounds cheaper than a laminated version. And I guess with the plain version, you can kind of do what you like to it. You can keep it raw, you can varnish it, you can wax it, you can paint it, you can kind of do whatever you want with it. However, we're gonna treat this beautifully today. But I think let's, let's finish up what we're doing here, take off the bits and take them straight to the workbench and start treating.
Now we've got the pieces removed and prepped and ready. Before I do anything else, uh, I'm just gonna go over the whole board with just a bit of 240 on a sanding block. Now, the interior does come sanded and prepped. However, it's been in our workshop. We've been moving it, handling it, storing it. So there's bound to be some marks and maybe just some nicks on it or anything else. So if you're not happy with the finish, get a nice uniform finish over the entire surface with a bit of 240 grit on a block and always sand with the brain. Once you have cleaned, sanded, prepped, and then cleaned again all of the panels that you want to treat, now's the time to get out the wax and all the tools you're going to need to carry out this next process. What we're going to be doing today is the first stage of the waxing process. And we are going to be using this product here. It's Morals Medium Brown More Wax and it comes in a large tin like this. I'm sure you can buy a smaller tin. However, this is what Terry's provided us today. So we've got the wax with the mutton cloth. Just double checking that's right, with the mutton cloth. We then have a green scotch bright and a polishing rag. In this case, an old t-shirt, but any clean rag will do. And we'll go through the process. We're gonna start with the plain birch ply door. Now, if you've never done this before, I'd suggest you do a practice run first, much like I've just done with Terry. We've done the process on this board here. Now, this is a shelf that's on the inside of the van, so it's not, if, it's, if anything was to go wrong, it's not gonna be a detriment to the actual finish of the interior in its completed state. If we have a look at the interior behind us, you could maybe work on the inside of the fridge cupboard, for example, or on the bottom of the drawer. So you can have a good practice, and then by the time you've, you've treated all the areas you can't see, you'll be a pro, and then you can get on with the outside faces of the interior. So the first stage then is applying this wax, and this is the difference in finishes you are going to achieve. We're gonna be applying the wax fairly liberally uh, with the with the cloth, um, with the mud cloth. We're gonna be applying it in a round motion to begin with, and then going up and down the grain evenly. And if you find any darker spots or lighter spots, go over it again, and then make sure you get an even coat throughout. The next stage is once you've left this to dry for 20 to 30 minutes, is you will go over that patch with the green Scotch Prime and you're going to be abrading that surface. Not too hard, you just want to give it a light scuff over, but an even scuff with the green scotch. And then that will take off a lot of the excess material um, ready for the next stage. Once you've used the green scotch, you will notice a bit of a sheen to the surface, whereas when you first apply it's a bit dull. We will then go over it with the uh, rag, with the polishing rag, and you will see you have this nice finish here, which really highlights the grain, but doesn't change the color too much. All right, so you won't really want to practice first, and then we can get on to the main doors. So here's hoping we don't mess this up. Let's get on with it. First stage then, making sure the panel is clean and free from dust. Secondly, you're gonna get your your mutton cloth, your polishing rag. And what you're gonna do, you're gonna make sure this surface here is a round ball, so there's no sort of creases or anything in it. And then you're just gonna get the, pot, get the wax out of the pot, so you make sure you've got an even spread over that ball area and it's wet. All right, so then we're gonna start from the middle. We're gonna do a circle in the middle and then we're gonna distribute the wax evenly up and down the panel so we don't get any streaks or any marks. Feel a bit of pressure now, but I think you'll agree. We've got a nice even coat on there. And what we're gonna do is let that dry. 
and then we're going to go over it with the green scotch. And that's all that's needed. That was just taking the little excess off there. And we've got a really nice uniform shine and it's really brought out that grain nicely. So the last stage of applying that wax layer is just to get your t-shirt or rag. I'm going to make a nice ball surface out of it there. I'm going to give that a buff. And I can already see the gloss layer changing or the level of sheen changing and it's easier you can always see the sort of waxy layer on that but that has now come up really really nice and evenly and then a nice even coat on that as well so with the door finished let's move on to the bit of worktop so that is the first coat or the first layer of wax um, you always see the drastic difference. You imagine all that now, completely coated in the same colour, really bringing out that grain. I can't wait. Let's go on with the work tool. As with the other bit, we have sanded, cleaned and prepped. We're going to get our cloth once more, make the nice rounded ball. And in the same process, we're going to give a nice sweep get a nice even coating of the wax on that cloth. And we're gonna start in the center with a swirl, and then we're gonna go with the grain, left and right, making sure an even coverage is maintained throughout. And that is an absolute thing of beauty now. What a transformation. In just a few minutes and a few different couple of processes, that solid worktop has had all that grain now properly defined. So now you can see with just that one coating, we haven't even varnished it yet, but look at the definition that's being created. It'll be beautiful contrast between this part, this part, and then the uh, backboard that goes on as well. I'm really happy with it. And as said before, this waxy coating will get into the grain and harden it slightly as well and then the floor varnish we're actually going to be using is actually designed for hardwood floors so it's designed to give you a really good coating and a, definitely you know a hard wearing protection on there as well so let's show you how we do that when it comes to applying your varnish you really want to leave everything you've just waxed for at least a day so a 24 hour period we aren't going to be varnishing the bits we've just waxed uh, because of that reason and we want to try and do it all in one day for you so what we've done is previously waxed this little tester piece here now this is just a solid piece of mdf with an oak veneer and you can see how that the, the grain has come out using that same wax on this piece now as a comparison this is the piece of birch ply that we varnished earlier, sorry, waxed earlier. And then you can see how that sunk into the grain and dried nicely and it's still got a nice sheen on it. And the varnish we're gonna be using today is uh, nothing particularly wow or unobtainable, but this is a Wix water-based hardwood floor varnish. Um, and we've chosen water-based over the oil um, because this is quite a large unit. First of all, we've chosen it because it's proven. It comes highly recommended from Terry, who does this sort of thing day in, day out. The other reason we've chosen it is because the parts that we're going to be doing here, the interior is actually quite big. There's lots of different elements. You might not be able to get it all varnished in one day. With an oil-based varnish, um, it's quite difficult to keep the brush and maintain its structure or without contaminating your pot of varnish with the cleaning solution that you've used to clean the brush. So with a water-based um, varnish, you can actually clean your brush easily, go back to the job the next day if you want to, or if you want to put another coat on, and you can actually use the same brush. Moving on to the brush, you want to go for a really high quality, fine bristle uh, brush 
because at the end of the day, when we're varnishing a piece of wood, we want to have as little amount of streaks as possible. So we don't wanna just go down a pound shop and go and get um, your disposable brushes. You wanna spend some good money on a good high quality, fine bristle brush. And that's what we've got here today. So this is just, like I said, a Wix water-based varnish. And if we have a look in there in a minute, it is quite a milky solution. And when we lay it on this piece of wood in particular, we're not working it in. You're just going to be laying it on top of the wood, making sure you've got a really nice even coat from start to finish. And the varnish itself, once you know the piece is laid flat, um, it actually has, what's the term I'm looking for, kind of a self-leveling um, action to it. So any, br uh, any brush strokes that may have found their way into it um, will actually sort of dissipate and you'll get a really nice smooth finish on that. And again, that's why we've chosen this one. Um, so let's crack straight on. So we've got this piece here. Again, it's not part of the um, interior we're dealing with today. It's just a test pit that we've prepared earlier, much like Blue Peter. So I've just given it a buff, given it a clean. And then when it comes to applying the varnish, I'm literally dipping the brush in. As you can see in the pot there, it's quite a milky solution in there. So you'll be able to tell when it's on the brush. Um, again, a water-based clear. So I'm literally dipping that in, tapping off any excess there, and I'm laying that on from edge to edge as evenly as possible. Again, I don't want to work the varnish too much, but at the same time, I want to cover it nice and evenly. and reduce the amount of streaks. So it's got a nice layer there. If you can see in the reflection of the light, it's got a nice even coating. And I'm just gonna literally leave that to one side and leave it till it's dry. As per the guidelines on the tin, once you've applied that varnish, it is touch dry in one to two hours and you can recoat it in four. However, we'd recommend that you leave it a good 24 hours until you start reassembling the interior. That being said, we won't be filming us covering the entire interior. I don't think you'd uh, wanna sit around and watch that amount of video. So what we're gonna be doing is treating this whole interior with the wax and then the varnish, and we'll bring you back when it comes to profiling any bits and pieces to fit and installing it into the van. We'll see you then. After hours and hours of waxing, prepping, varnishing and drying time, here's the end result. And how blooming beautiful is it? Um, it's a really nice contrast actually, I feel, to what you'd normally see in camper vans today. They're either gloss black, gloss white, they try and look like um, carbon fiber, or they're really bold colors. So to have something really natural like this in a camper van, it's a bit of a throwback really, especially in something like a, a silver T6 lowered on big alloys. It's just a complete departure from the norm and it's a real nice contrast inside and out. Um, and what can I tell you about it really? Uh, we've had to do some modifications on some of the bits and pieces. So for example, the top lockers, we've had to trim uh, the boards. They come as sort of a generic shape. So we've trimmed them and placed them into uh, the curvatures of the roof. And we've had to modify them slightly as we've got the pop top uh, frame around it. So it wouldn't be the same as a factory shape. We've modified the splashback to fit round the Van Shades uh, pod. And although they're very, very tricky, I think the actual effect once it's all done and in is absolutely stunning. The roller shutter door for the tambour door, we did put another coat on that. We prepped it, coated it and varnished it again. And just look how clean it is throughout. Everything was disassembled, waxed and varnished and placed back in there. And now all the switches, the 240 volt, the 12 volt, the USB points, it's that really nice clash between sort of the, the new and the old or the modern and the more, I don't know, rustic looking. Um, in terms of fixing the interior into the van, we did hard fastenings directly into the metal for the main frame. So up in this top corner here and underneath the workbench, we've actually got the highest points of the interior throughout 
anchored into the metal framework of the van. So we used M6 nuts and M6 riv nuts, and that will involve drilling a hole of anywhere between sort of eight and nine millimeter. You put the riv nut within the metal work, clamp it down like a rivet using the appropriate tool, and then you've got the M6 nut that you can actually bolt in there. And that's really not going anywhere now. Um, just to secure the bottom, um, we've used some of the right angle brackets and we've just screwed it into the floor and that's not to necessarily anchor the interior into the van that's just to stop any sort of movement side to side of maybe the divisions in the cupboard and the shelves and the sides of the uh, fridge area and that's about it um, really really nice interior we're super chuffed for this as you can see the bed yet to be fitted we're fitting a rusty lee three quarter width rock and roll bed uh, it's the non crash tested version uh, or the non tuff tested version uh, but it's got seat belts and uh, all of these bits you see here are available to buy from our website I know it's a cheeky little plug but uh, you've got to do that sort of thing haven't you so yeah the rusty Lee bed the interiors from van furniture the fridges the lighting the wiring everything is available from kingbellycampus.co.uk um, and we're really happy to be able to offer that to you and give you these videos uh, to help you prep or even uh, varnish and wax your interiors um i hope you like it we certainly do and the customer is absolutely over the moon with it as well so for now i'll see you next time bye bye